kind of a new uh, circulation developed here on the back side of this. But what we're seeing, there's a brand new radar update. Uh, we, we have the circulation basically right there. Uh, and this is just straddling the state line here. And so as the whole line of storms is kind of sliding east somewhat slowly, the individual storms are more to the north-northeast there. Uh, it's worth a mention, and I can see this just uh, kind of the, the edge of it from the, the northern view here. Uh, it looks like there's a new circulation developing down here east of Waynesboro. So it looks like that may actually be the trigger for this tornado warning. Uh, in fact, uh, so it's kind of two circulations, and both of them are kind of encompassed by this new tornado warning that now includes northeastern Wayne County and uh, huge portion of Ch almost all of Choctaw County, in fact, and that runs until 645. Our tornado warning for southeastern Clark County, Mississippi, runs until 615. We're going to stay with you until these tornado warnings are gone. Uh, again, this is a very real threat uh, that's opening up here across our area. It's not over yet. Uh, it took a little bit of a break for a little while and then said, uh, yeah, no, I uh, didn't want to take that break anymore. So I want to track these, uh, these new circulations that are developing for you and give you a rough time of arrival. Uh, these are not going to be exact, of course. There's always some room for some variation. I'm going to start with this circulation because it's the one that's really right on top of us right now. And this one is very near the Alabama state line and tracking off toward the northeast. That's going to put this near Hinton at about 610 and then near Riderwood at about 616. So now let's track the second storm. And once again, we're going to track it from just east of Waynesboro. The circulation is east of 45 right there, right where the green and the red uh, come together. So this is, um, this is a little bit of a longer track. And, and because, it, of, it, because it is a longer track, it's also a wider track. So you see this kind of open up as it gets toward um, areas like Needham and Butler especially. But look, this comes into the Gretna community within about the next five or six minutes. The arrival time on this is 6.06. .06. Then it's over Emory at 6.11. Evansboro, just into Choctaw County there at 6.17. Gilbertown, this is scary close to you at 6.21. It's close to Toxie at 6.24. Needham at 6.28. Land at 6.32. Red Springs at 6.34. Butler, 640, and then Mount Sterling at 642. That gets us through the majority of that tornado warning. And once again, this is now two tornado warnings, one in the eastern sliver of Clark County, Mississippi, and the other that includes a huge chunk, uh, just about all, of Choctaw County, not to mention northeastern Wayne County. It looks like a little uh, northwest corner of Washington County is also uh, included in that down to the south. So uh, that circulation uh, will pass Highway 84 there close to Gretna uh, probably within about the next five, six minutes or so. Uh, again, that uh, pegged for an arrival there uh, at, at about 6.06. Okay? Yeah, okay. yeah, we can... No new information in terms of uh, what's happening there, but... Um... Definitely watching that circulation as it continues to spin east of uh, Waynesboro, heading toward uh, uh, the county line there. So, again, nothing new to report at this mm -hmm. time. So that's the only uh, tornado warning that I do believe we have outside of the one that's going to expire here soon for Clark County. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And... And yes, we're 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 getting uh, Dietro, uh, we're getting that mic squared away here, so you can hear her better here in just a second. But um, yeah, th this has been an active. Uh, I, I've been saying this, just an active day, and um, so now there looks like three tornado warnings. Chocta, oh no, another one coming up through Wayne County there. Um, so this is down south. Uh, let's talk about this one because this one, if this holds together, this is another problem for Choctaw County and for Clark County as well. So this is a new tornado warning for central and southern Wayne County, and this includes the city of Waynesboro. It's this storm right here that has prompted that, and we're going to take a look at the wind on this too so that we can uh, really pinpoint that circulation. This is a very broad circulation right now, but I can tell you that this is tracking off toward the north and slightly northeast there. And again, Waynesboro is going to be very close to the path of this. Now, this is the storm that has the warning for Choctaw County now. But as this races more toward the north and northeast here, uh, that's... It could potentially mean a, a downstream warning a little bit later on for Choctaw County, maybe even for part of Clark County, if this holds together. So we're going to be watching that one. It's not the only thing we're watching. 
Uh, but of course, we'll be watching it closely. Something else that kind of catches my attention here, Dietra, is this this kind of development, this, these, these stronger storms that are developing from about Stonewall and Enterprise down through Pachuda and Heidelberg. Those catch my attention because they're just behind a break in the line right here, and they do appear to be intensifying. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see uh, how these are going to play out because they do appear to have some small swirls of circulation within them. Especially south of Heidelberg, there's a nice little rotation uh, just south of there, again, along that line, just north and east of Sandersville. So uh -huh. you're right, these are definitely... Uh, some some storms to kind of keep our eyes on, even though you have a bit of a break. Again, things are not quite over yet in Clark County. That's right. So, uh, you know, we're not just watching the worn storms. We're watching all of these storms uh, uh, to make sure they, they don't sneak up on us. And uh, the, the storms that are coming up now out of Wayne County uh, have proven to be problematic for us in Clark and Choctaw counties as well. Uh, so far, I, I don't have any reports of damage from either one of these storms. And uh, if there's not a tornado with them, there could be a tornado with them at any time. Uh, but I can also tell you that... Uh, the, 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 it sometimes takes some time to get these damage reports. These are some strong circulations, though, that, that we're seeing uh, that have developed here. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like the Clark County warning has just been canceled. Am I seeing that correctly? Okay. Um, yes. Excellent. So that, uh, that circulation that we were tracking there in the southeast corner of Clark County looks like it's just crossed the state line. And since it's got more of an eastward than westward component to the motion, uh, this has, uh, it's enough to, to allow the National Weather Service to cancel that warning. Of course, we're watching the circulation coming from the south and now an even bigger circulation that's coming up uh, into the Gretna community just west of the Choctaw and Wayne County line. So it's in Wayne County and approaching the southwest corner now of Choctaw County. And there was just a radar update. Let's see if the wind is updated too. Uh, looks like it has. It's right here in this area. So let's get a little bit closer to this. And uh, and yeah, we're, we're seeing this just kind of wind up. This is um, uh, not what we want to see right now. This intensifying circulation is tracking off toward the uh, really north to northeast, probably a little bit more north than, than pure northeast here, but uh, uh, roughly on that track right there. And so that's going to take this up to the Emory community by about 6.13, uh, the ISNI community is there too at 6.11, Paragon 6.20, Akatapa at about 6.25. So uh, that kind of gets into some of the, uh, the, the much smaller communities there in Choctaw County and, and gets us a little bit closer into, uh, into your neighborhoods so that you can kind of see uh, when this is coming in. So this, again, is a, a circulation that could develop a tornado. And looks like Deatrice got some... Yeah, there. aside from that, I mean, again, flooding is, is the other issue that we're watching. And we do have a new flash flood warning that is in effect for Clark County, Kemper County, uh, Lauderdale counties, uh, and even uh, southeastern Neshoba County. Uh, all of this goes until 10 o'clock because it looks as if uh, these areas between two and three inches of rain has already fallen. And an additional maybe one to two inches uh, could definitely happen. So, again, flash flooding uh, is either happening in your area or it is expected to happen happen soon. So again, we do have a flash flood warning in effect for parts of Clark, uh, Kemper, Lauderdale, and Neshoba counties in our area. So again, that's the secondary, but definitely important uh, part of this uh, whole equation. Absolutely. And, and look, on, on, on the flash flooding note, please remember that if you're out, you're driving around, you see an area where there's water covering the road where that doesn't normally happen, uh, don't try to cross that. That's extremely dangerous, and probably more people die that way than, than die in tornadoes. Um, that's, a, 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 again, a very dangerous thing to do, and uh, you, you don't even know if the road is still there. And, and if the road is, in fact, washed away, that becomes an even more dangerous situation. No, uh, so we have a tornado threat. We have a developing flash flood threat. If flash flooding is not occurring, it is imminent, and that's why now flash flood warnings have been expanded up into Lauderdale, Clark, Jasper, Newton, Kemper, and part of Neshoba County. And remember, I showed you, and I can show you this again, I showed you maybe 30, 45 minutes ago, uh, our future cast uh, is, has been indicating uh, quite a bit of rain falling with this, and I'm going to come over to our future cast here, uh, here at the um, at the computer, so we can see this here. Uh, but look, our future cast at one point was showing uh, another an additional five inches of rain in DeKalb. Uh, now, as I mentioned, that was some time ago, 
And so some of that rain has already fallen. Our future Castile is trying to, pay, uh, to, to bring another four and a half inches or more into Kemper County. And then another two to three, perhaps, in uh, areas like Meridian and Newton. Now, not everybody's going to get that much more. And I would say, just based on this message from the National Weather Service, that this may be a little bit overdone, but I still wouldn't be surprised to see in some localized cases uh, significantly higher amounts than, than what we're hearing there from the National Weather Service. Um, I can tell you too, I can give you an idea of how much rain has in fact fallen uh, today and we're going to do that really quickly here and uh, again I'm going to show you this graphic and I show you this because it auto updates. Ah, and the National or the name NAS Meridian um, reading has been repaired it looks like. So we're over an inch, almost an inch and a quarter for the day so far at Meridian Regional Airport. And again, our future cast is still showing us another two inches or more could still fall at Meridian. The Naval Air Station at Meridian, over an inch and a third at this point. That's a lot of rain. Also, it's worth a mention, the tornado watch has now been canceled for Kemper County, for Noxubee County, and for Neshoba and Newton counties. So Lauderdale County, Clark County, Jasper County, Wayne County, and Jones County in East Mississippi still are a part of this tornado watch until 7 o'clock. And then in West Alabama, we're still in this tornado watch for Sumter, Choctaw, Green, Hale, Marengo, and Pickens counties. So uh, that again is the, the, the latest update on that tornado watch. It is being trimmed, slowly but surely. Uh, and look, any, any little bit of news like that is good news. And of course, in addition to that, we've got these tornado warnings to talk about too. Yeah, and there could possibly be uh, a warning but I'm just going to re relate this to you. Um, but we're looking at this Choctaw County sale, and of course, again, we are definitely keeping you informed about that. But just to the north and west of that near Needham, um, the National Weather Service is watching a circulation there. It's just south and west of Lisman. So just a heads up, if you're around Lisman or west of there, you could possibly be dealing with another tornado warning that could be impacting you within the next, let's say, half hour. That's an important point to make there. Thank you for that. Um, I, I can tell you, too, that uh, so the current tornado warning stops just about Butler. And um, and so expanding that to the north to include Lisbon uh, may actually include that small circulation that, that came out of... Um, uh, Clark County here a short time ago. There was that smaller circulation that kind of came up through the southeast corner of Clark County, and I think that may be uh, the the cause for that. So that still is something, of course, that we uh, are watching and will continue watching uh, as we get into that. So let's 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 get in a little bit closer to this. This is what Deitra was talking about. Uh, this new circulation uh, that is now coming up closer to Lisbon from the south here. Uh, so let's get right there. We're going to take a look at the wind, and that's that's exactly it. This is the circulation that we're talking about. It is currently within the scope of the previous tornado warning that's from that storm that's still down there in Wayne County. But this newest radar image shows that circulation trying to intensify a bit. This is moving mostly north and then a little bit east. So let's expand this beyond the warning. I'm going to get it even north of Highway 80 there so you can kind of get an idea of where this is headed if it holds together. There's no guarantee that it will hold together, but it could. So Riderwood, this comes into your area about 618. Push Mataha at 622. It arrives in Cromwell at 627. Halsell at 631. Kenterbish at 634. Gaston at 638. Cuba, perhaps, at 641. Uh, looks like that, was that just issued, that new tornado warning? Nope, that's not it. Uh, sorry, uh, Cuba 641, Scratch Hill 644, York 647, and then Lolita at 651. That's when that, that kind of secondary circulation comes in that's really ahead of the bigger circulation coming up from uh, Wayne County there. So let's tra uh, track that circulation as well now that we have this new radar data. Uh, that new radar data still, look at that, another circulation down in southern Wayne County. So another tornado warning. We've been watching that one too. And it looks like that's, did they just issue that now for, for the southeast corner there of Choctaw County? Or for uh, Clark County, rather? It looks like they just maybe added that. Oh, no, it just kind of follows the Wayne County line. There's a curve in the Wayne County line that uh, 
that's, that's what I'm seeing there. So anyway, that's, that's another circulation we're tracking. Then this, this is the bigger circulation. This just came across Gretna, and it's just now crossing Highway, four, uh, Highway 84. Uh, and so this is it, it getting closer to you in the Gilbertown area. I'm going to slide this map to the north just a little bit so that we can uh, put the tracker on this and, and actually track it up through uh, Choctaw County here. So Gilbertown, Butler, all are in the path of this one. Let's fix that and send it up more to the north. And you can get an idea. This is the bigger circulation. This actually prompted this tornado warning. And uh, then that newer circulation kind of rolled over out of, uh, out of Clark County. And that's the one that's up there uh, just to the south of Lisbon and Pushmataha. But this one coming from the south, that circulation's uh, going to be approaching Gilbertown close to 620. So you have less than 10 minutes. Toxie, 623, a little bit more than 10 minutes there. In Needham, it arrives at 628. It arrives in Land at 631. Butler, 639. Lisbon at 643. Cromwell, 648. Jakin at 651. Pennington, 653. And the Nahiola at 656. This is the bigger circulation. But it's not the only circulation. Uh, it does appear to be the stronger of these two circulations as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's the next circulation coming up from the south of Waynesboro. I want to put the tracker on this one, too. And we're going to bring this right across the top of Wayne County and really right up through Waynesboro. As this is tracking up toward the north and northeast here, you get an idea of when this could arrive again, if it holds together. It could be over Waynesboro, 617. Uh, looks like uh, Matherville, 636. Mount Levy School at 636 as well. Uh, Evansboro, 640. Carmichael School, 642. Melvin, 643. Eiler, 647. And then Linton at 649. So this, again, has implications on what happens downstream in Clark County and even in Choctaw County. For now, there are no tornado warnings in Clark County. We do have a tornado warning, however, for Choctaw County. And uh, that tornado warning extends back into now Wayne County. Yeah, and also we have a report coming out of Livingston right now, um, a report uh, from the police department that there is flooding on Alabama 28 under the railroad underpass uh, just down from the uh, U.S. 11 Alabama 28 East intersection. So a foot of water crossing the road. So again, if you encounter a roadway like that, never ever drive over it. You don't know how deep the water is. This is just an estimate. You don't know what the condition of the road is under that water. So again, there is reports of flooding in Livingston uh, from the police department there. So this is down 28, uh, probably a little bit south of downtown there, south of where we're looking here at the University of West Alabama, which is in town. Um, so yeah, a, a foot of water across the road is never, never good news. Uh, and as Deitra mentioned, please don't drive through that. Uh, that's uh, very dangerous and often is deadly, as a matter of fact. Uh, tornado warnings, though, still are, are kind of the king of the, uh, the afternoon and, and the early part of this evening. Uh, we're, let's see, we're here at 6.15, and uh, normally you'd be seeing News 11 at 6 right about now, and normally I'd be talking about the weather forecast right about now. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we're still uh, tracking these uh, potentially dangerous severe thunderstorms right now, but... Um, I, I, I do know that we're watching also for another potential tornado warning. Um, I actually want to talk a little bit about the forecast while we're waiting now for this next um, uh, update from updated radar scan from EMEPA Live Radar, and while we're waiting to see whether we actually get this new um, uh, this new tornado warning. Was that it? That could have been it. Nope, not quite. Okay, so I just want to kind of go really quickly through our future cast with you here. And, um, and look, there's still plenty of rain even after the severe weather threat ends in about the next hour or so. Now, by the time we get to 10 o'clock, most of the rain has exited to the east. We still can have some spots of light rain, however. And you see, we're still fairly warm with these temperatures in the upper 60s. But I want you to be ready because we're going to have some cooler air that moves in behind this system. And as you're getting ready to head out the door first thing in the morning, there's 6 a.m., these temperatures drop into the lower and middle 50s. So it may be that a lot of us want jackets on the way out the door first thing in the morning. And then we fast forward to lunchtime. And because there's a lot of low cloud cover left over, we're struggling to get up beyond about the low to mid 50s at the lunch shower and some of these northwestern areas may even struggle to get out of the upper 40s. Through the afternoon we get a little closer to 60 but we also start noticing some thicker clouds sneaking down from the north maybe bringing some light little sprinkles with them. These are not going to be heavy storms not big storms by any means but that's about as warm as we get. We go into the evening and we start cooling so our Wednesday evening uh, takes on a little bit of a chill and that little bit of a chill can certainly come with um, uh, 
a need for even heavier jackets and coats for first thing Thursday morning. We'll cool down to 39 degrees. Uh, we may struggle to hit that 67. We'll update that number for you, but um, we're going to go through some more data before I make a, a final uh, call on that. But we'll make it to 68 Thursday. We're almost to 70 again on Friday and Saturday. Look, this is a beautiful weekend setting up, and I think we deserve it after today, right? Um, the mornings get a little chilly. We're talking upper 30s and lower 40s. The afternoons, they're comfortable, but they're unseasonably cool in the upper 60s there. And then how about Monday, 75? That's not too bad. The 80s are back by next Tuesday, though. And even the mornings are starting to warm up a little bit more. Uh, Tuesday morning starts in those middle 50s. So that's just a quick look ahead for you. Um, because, again, now is about that time I would be uh, kind of telling you about that on News 11 at 6 uh, every night. So let's get back to EMEPA live radar. And uh, I don't see a new warning here yet. We're still watching for that. And uh, as EMEPA Live Radar updates, I do want to send things back over to Emily Erickson at the desk. Kemper County Sheriff James Moore that he just sent in to us of damage on J.J. Hagen Road in okay. Kemper County here. I uh, have them up on our W2K Facebook page. There they are. He has sent us these. Look at that. Those trees just snapped there. I'm going to go through it. He sent us several photos. So thank you, Sheriff Moore. Let's see if we can show that there. That root ripped up. These are a little smaller. Let's see if we can. There we go. There's some more. Just snapped there. This is, once again, um, some of these are on J.J. Hagen Road. We're waiting on confirmations where the exact location of all of these are. He is sending them in as he gets service. Look at that. I don't know if you see that deature or not. That is a, that could be a part of a mobile home there. Um, and so that you can see that whole tree, tree has just been rooted up from uh, those, those winds out there. So once again, these are coming in from Kemper County Sheriff James Moore. Uh, on J.J. Hagen Road. I hope I'm saying that correctly. There, some of these are a little smaller. He doesn't have a lot of good service out there, so we are trying to get these in as quick as as quick as he can. But you can see that that path of destruction has just completely flattened a lot of trees. You see a lot of tin out there, a lot of debris. So this this was not a storm to mess with. Uh, this is all in Kemper County. We do have a crew on the way out to Kemper County right now. We will have more coming up on News 11 at 10 showcasing more of the damage. Like I said, right now we're, we're getting a lot of the reports here in Kemper County for this damage. And um, DHR, are there any new warnings? Are we still? Yeah, we still have one warning uh, that we're watching in Choctaw County, and so we're definitely going to talk about that. But again, in Kemper County, they look oh. like a tough hit. And, uh, you know, we're definitely watching the, the reports that are coming in. Um, they've had a couple of, that I can think of, tornadic storms that go through there. so. Again, thankfully, no injuries being reported. As yes, far as I know. no injuries being reported. He just confirmed that again. This uh, a lot of this damage was on JJ Hagen Road, and Sheriff James Moore is sending us more photos in. Let's see, uh, uh, Stephen, if you want to look at this, it looks like this might have been part of a, a mobile home here on on this damage, a corner there. You can see that tree just uprooted. Uprooted. It may have been a mobile home, or it may have even been a. Um like a vinyl siding home. Right. It's hard to tell uh, f with certainty. Um, but both tend to not hold up very well in tornadoes. So uh, you, were, you were saying last night, too, if you're in a mobile home, get out for the storm. You are safer in a ditch than exactly. you are in a mobile home. So, for sure. Um, once again, these are, if you are just joining us, coming in from Kimber County Sheriff James Morey, sending us these photos. J.J. Hagen Road. W2K does, we do have a crew heading out there now. They should be out there any moment. They are getting their own footage of this, their own reports, seeing where else damage is. Uh, the sheriff is still getting us addresses. He says there is just widespread damage, several, several homes damaged. He's trying to get those exact locations. And we will update, update you on all of this on News 11 at 10 tonight and we will get the information from our own reporters and what they see and what's what's going on there and Deitra did just mention this a moment ago there are no injuries being reported right now thankfully so but you can definitely see the big impact of of these winds that have that have rolled through here I'm going to scroll through these one more time and then we can toss it back over to Stephen and uh once again just it's a lot there it just shows there the go. power of absolutely do. absolutely so we're talking tornadic storms even straight line winds you just mm -hmm. want to make sure that you take it seriously get to your safe place get to a sturdy structure and unfortunately we do still have a tornado warned sale uh in Choctaw county and actually it looks like the rotation is getting a little uh, tighter 
near the Gilbert Town area. Yeah. Let's so let's jump back over if we can to MEP Elev Radar, and, and we can show we can do some more pictures. Thank you, Emily, uh, for that. Uh, it's always uh, useful to know that, especially when we're trying to warn downstream uh, for some of these storms. That storm, of course, was earlier. And look, the the lightning intensity ramping up in Gilbert Town uh, alone tells me that this is starting to intensify a little bit more. And that circulation, yeah, that looks mean. I said that about a circulation a little bit earlier. That's getting dangerously close there to uh, Gilbert Town, and in fact, I. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see uh, the, some of the highways and uh, even some of the communities here on the map. So there is Gilbert Town. That circulation's coming in now from the south. And um, uh, you're, you look, you're, you're in the heavy rain now if you're watching from Gilbert Town. And then there's this, uh, this kind of piece of it right here where there's that deepest red. Uh, there may be some small hail uh, associated with that as well, along with the heavy rain that's, that's really embedded within that. So I want to put the wind back up here so I can get a better uh, track on, on the actual... Um, uh, the circulation here uh, and it looks like this is coming in from the south right right in here where we see the the kind of wrapping of the red and the green together uh, this is again tracking off toward the north northeast a bit here so I'm going to track this downstream and we're going to get it as far as we can up through Choctaw County right along Highway 17. Uh, this arrives at Gilbert Town within about a minute and a half to two minutes at 625 then it moves on to Toxie in another three minutes, so maybe about four or five minutes from now at 628. Hodgewood, it arrives there at 630. Then Jackson Spur, 631. Red Springs, heading up 17 there at 638. Then it arrives in Butler, 644. Mount Sterling at 646. Uh, and then over the Little Walker community at 650. So that extends this even beyond the scope of the warning. That warning goes until 645. So, yeah, an intensifying circulation is showing up there. Uh, it looks like that circulation uh, over northern Choctaw County that we were watching close to Lisbon um, hasn't prompted a new warning yet. So uh, that little bit of information is good to know. But it, eh, there's, a, there's still a weak circulation there. It doesn't look like it's very well organized. Uh, so, again, that so far has not prompted uh, another tornado warning for the northern part of Choctaw County. But this storm coming in from the south, that's where we have some problems and that's where uh, that tornado warning continues. Remember the tornado watch continues until seven o'clock. Uh, that's a little bit more than a half hour away and we're going to stay with you as long as these tornado warnings are active here in our viewing area uh, because we want to make sure everybody's safe. We want to make sure everybody is uh, able to stay ahead of this uh, as we've done all day long. But uh, right now our focus is really southeastern uh, Choctaw County and, and, and a, lot, a lot of people will sometimes say well why are we talking about this? This is nowhere near Meridian. We don't just cover Meridian. We cover cover areas from roughly Forest over to Highway 43 at Demopolis and then really from about Louisville south to Waynesboro. So we have a large area that we cover and we want to make sure we're covering everybody because everybody needs to know that there is in fact dangerous weather out there. This circulation near Gilbert Gilbertown is what we're most concerned about right now. That's where the biggest threat of a tornado is and uh, this is tracking off toward the northeast. I just showed you that list of arrival times and that is within that tornado warning in Choctaw County that is effective until 645 and that extends back into Wayne County as well. Now there's a second tornado warned storm in Wayne County. Uh, that one looks like it's weakening uh, fairly quickly, but I want to take a closer look at it just to kind of uh, know for sure what's happening with this because it's just crossed really uh, Highway 45 south of Waynesboro. Um, and yeah, I'm not seeing any strong circulation back there. They may let that warning uh, go ahead and expire here before too long. So uh, that would certainly be good, but uh, not good as, of course, this, this storm that's back up here uh, over Choctaw County. That's really the, the primary focus for us right now. And, and I don't want you to, to downplay our... Uh, or let your guard down just yet, even back to the west of this, because some of these storms can still pack some punch even west of the forward edge uh, of the, the primary storm, well, the primary line of storms that now stretches from about Tuscaloosa down to kind of in between Livingston and Demopolis, and then down through Butler toward, uh, uh, say, Chatham, Alabama there in, in Wayne County. Yeah, we do have reports coming in actually out of Clark County. Uh, we're trying to figure out exactly where the crossroads are, but Clark County Road 630 in Carmichael, mm -hmm. uh, roof, blow, roof blown off cars, or roofs, I'm assuming that's what they went to, meant to say, were blown off vehicles. Uh, no, a roof is blown off and cars are damaged and power pulled down is what 
the sentence is saying. So quite a bit of damage uh, around uh, County Road 630 in Clark County. Uh, but if I get more information about the crossroads, I'll give you more information about that. Okay, so that's going to be there near, near uh, the, like you said, near Carmichael in Clark County. Uh, there is County Road 630, and you see that it kind of runs right through Carmichael there. And um, uh, this is from the storm that, that moved through probably just a short time ago, probably about an hour or so ago uh, was when this one moved through. And this was, I think, the reason we really took over uh, News 11 at 5 um, and have stayed with you ever since because there was a circulation that passed very near Carmichael a little bit earlier. And then it weakened as it lifted to the north, and then that new circulation developed back behind it. And so that's it's around 630 and County Road 6, 618. That's the cross. Roads. So County Road 630 and 618 is the crossroads mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, and, and that's, uh, again, we don't like to hear about the damage, and I, I hope there are no injuries or um, anything like that. I know that's not necessarily in that report one way or the other. Right. But that's coming from uh, emergency management, so uh, pretty official. So, unfortunately, I'm sure yeah. as we get more info, they'll, they'll break it down. But oh, that's sure. coming out of Clark County. Absolutely.